So it's almost one o'clock. I would like to welcome you to the coffee lecture from the Chemistry Biology Pharmacy Information Center. Uh, today's topic is EndNote, and as you may know, EndNote is a reference management tool, and it's not the only one. So there are many reference management tools out there, and I would like to um, uh, make a little bit of a, um, marketing here for a very nice course, Find Your Reference Manager Software, which is organized by the ETH library, and it's actually a Moodle course. You can do it online. Um, it's a very comprehensive course, but I think it will answer the question, which reference management software is the best for me? Uh, is that Zotero, is it Mendeley, or is it EndNote? I do not have time today to compare those three. Um, we do regularly give coffee lectures on all three of them, but um, if you would like to le learn more, I think this is a very nice course. Now, if you don't have time to um, do a complete course, there are also um, documents out there from, um, for example, one is from um, Technische Universität Munich uh, on comparison, more, also a bit more technical aspects of comparison of different uh, reference management software or um, Slurp Dresden also has a comparison like that. And um, I can later on post these links into the, into the chat if you're interested. Okay, so what about reference management tools in general? What do we expect from them? Well, we expect that it is very easy to create a library of biographic references using different import options. So if you have a folder with PDFs, you just want to import it and get the metadata extracted automatically. We, um, of course, expect that uh, building citations and reference lists in Word documents or uh, other types of software for writing will be doable. And then, um, what is also very important is that one can annotate the PDFs, that those annotations can be saved and searched for. That is also very important. So if you have labels, it would be nice that you can search for labels. Um, a new functionality of EndNote now is that you can add text to your, um, to your uh, uh, PDFs and so on. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Then uh, finally, the work nowadays is very interdisciplinary. We work with many people. We want to share the references. Um, and EndNote does allow to um, share references if you have a so-called uh, EndNote web account. Um, so you must do that. And then you can share references with others. You can uh, work uh, online um, um, from your phone or so. And you can sy synchronize libraries uh, between different um, computers and operating systems. So I will not uh, show so much about sharing and synchronizing today, but what I will do is um, I'm gonna um, show you how EndNote works because it is one of the most popular and I think power, most powerful reference managers. Since I only have 10 minutes, I'm gonna do a very quick overview of that, but I would like to tell you that ETH library gives um, a regular EndNote courses, um, which are one and a half hours long. And they go more into details. And the next one is now on May 16th at five o'clock. There are slots still available um, for that course. At ETH Zurich, EndNote is available in IT shop. And if I know correctly, it's for free for students and staff has to pay. Um, new with EndNote 21, which is the latest version, is that you can also use it with Google Docs. So not only with Word. And um, there, are, there are some other things um, in regarding synchronization and backups that are also dealt now um, more in uh, better in the new version of EndNote. All right, with that, um, I have still seven minutes time to show you how EndNote actually works. And that's the most interesting part. So I have it installed here on my um, desktop. So I'm, I'm now in EndNote uh, 21. And if I wanna create a library, uh, hello, I just go to file. Uh, I go to new and uh, I decide on the name of the library. I'll call it now coffee lecture. And I'm gonna put it, let's say into my um, coffee lectures folder and note 24. Um, this library uh, should not be in a cloud as it can get corrupted. This is very important. So EndNote library, you should always uh, store locally. And here we are. You can see it, I'll try to make it as big as possible. 
Uh, so that's how EndNote looks. You have three panels. In this panel, you uh, organize your, your groups, your papers, you search for full text, you tag documents, and you have an option to do directly an online search in several databases. If you click on the plus, you get a whole list of library catalogs and databases that you can search to do direct online searches in EndNote from here. I do not recommend that so much. I think searching in real databases is better because you have more filters and more options. But if you search something specific, this is quite nice. I in particular like the connection to the library catalogs of many different universities that you get here. Now, but the start is to build groups um, where you can then place your documents and it's very easy. There are several options. What I'm going to show today is the option with right mouse click. So I go on my groups and I'm going to say I'm going to create a group. And let me first take um, a group on um, my research, which is related to Tubulin. So I'm going to call it Tubulin. And now I want to populate this group such that I will see some papers here. And the way researchers very often work is that they collect their PDFs somewhere uh, on a computer. And then there's a folder with lots of PDFs. And you need to uh, use them when you write papers. And uh, with EndNote, to get these PDFs into EndNote, you have this option, File Import. And I've prepared here a um, folder with PDF examples, Tubulin. Here I have some papers on Tubulin. So if I want to import those papers, I just go here. Under options, I say that I want to import the whole PDF file or folder. I do import. And the papers appear here in the, in the middle panel. Um, the uh, metadata are automatically extracted, so you get authors, uh, titles, and so on uh, extracted. And you see here how this all looks like. Um, uh, in that part, then you can look at the summary. You can um, edit that. So if there are fields you don't agree with, you can um, change that. You can add labels, which you can later search. You can add keywords, which you can later search. So this is all editable. And then if you would like to look at the PDF, you can also do that. Um, if you want to see that bigger, you can click on that file on that link and then you have a big PDF here, um, which you can then also annotate if you like. So I'm not going to spend much time with that. Um, you can also use Adobe, you can print the, 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 the PDF. So that's all very easy. So that's one way to, um, to import PDFs. The other way is of course that you go to a, database yeah and you search for pa papers there so let me go to scopus and let me search for papers from eth zurich yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna do our search on organizations so let me do that search for eth zurich what you see here in scopus this is really easily we have now almost 200,000 papers from eth zurich here if i click on that I, of course, will not now download the titles uh, of all of them, but let me um, let me go and sort them by uh, highly cited papers and um, select a couple of them for demonstration. Oops, that was too fast. First five. Let me see um, what to do now. So I, there are five papers I'm interested in and now which I would like to have in my library. So what I do is I go then to export and uh, decide on the RIS format, which is uh, readable by EndNote. And here I can say what kind of information I want to export. So citation information, certainly. I could also go for bibliographical information and abstract keyword if you like, or I skip that one such that it's not too big. I click on export and then this scopus.ris file appears. And if I click on it, I have selected now already that it's openable by EndNote. And now all these um, papers, which I was interested in, uh, appear here in the imported references folder. And then it's important to know this is a temporary folder. So if you want to keep those papers, you have to actually select them and move them to a group where you would like to have them. Now, this is not research on Tubulin, but it's on something else. So I'm going to make a new group here called um, ETH. Zurich, um, and I'm going to import those references there. OK, so I have them now here. Now, what you see is um, the metadata is nicely extracted, but of course, there are no PDFs. 
yeah, because the, the literature database doesn't give you PDFs by default. And um, this is now the functionality which I like most. You can basically just select the papers that you would like to have as PDF as well. Now I'll select all five of them, uh, do the right mouse click and say, find full text. And if you are within the ETH network, EndNote will automatically at attach the PDFs to those um, to those uh, references that are here. And this is coming now. If it doesn't find it, then it will say it one, one was not found. So far, three were found already. Uh, so while this is happening, I would I would like to show you this option tags, which is a new option. So you can generate tags um, here with EndNote. For example, if you have um, menu reviews. In your database, you can say red are reviews. Um, then you can say orange are papers. There's data that need be to be uh, to look into, and then you can um, tag the papers. Or let me take here. I'm gonna do it now by just um, with, with not much um, knowing what is inside. But let's say that here there are some data inside that I should look at, and then you can click on that. Uh, go to the edit, say manage tag, and add the tag, the yellow tag for data, and then you see it here. And then you can also then, of course, sort on that later. So that's just a little bit on how um, how uh, EndNote works. A very important thing is um, when you import papers, what often happens is that um, the journal abbreviations get screwed up, as you can see here. There are all of a sudden no journal abbreviations. That's a topic that very often comes up. And then when you start citing those papers, uh, things go wrong. Um, don't be afraid to delete them yeah, before you start writing. Um, you can delete all this and import them again um, by going to define terms list, um, import list. And then if you go to the applications where EndNote is installed, you have this folder called terms and you can choose the area you're working on. I now chose chemistry and then the terms will be imported and they're going to be nicely there again. So if I go now to open terms list, journals terms list, oops, they should actually be there. <laughs> I don't know now why they didn't show up. I should repeat that step, but I don't have time. So now all the journals should be nicely there with all the abbreviations. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do not have time anymore to show you much more than that. There's thinking possibility. Um, if you want to share, you can just click right click share group. Um, to share, you need to sync, you need to have an online account for EndNote. And just to finish um, how to cite, it's really, really easy. So if you're in EndNote, uh, in, in Word, for example, I have here an example where I um, wrote something welcome to the coffee lecture but let me do something else now here i'm interested in tubulin so that's my sentence and then i can cite uh, one way is i can cite directly from here uh, with insert citation option uh, i then need to define which library i need to use so um, i need the coffee lecture library now and then I should here search for um, tubulin. Let's see if I have something. Yes, there are some papers on tubulin and I can insert. And then as you can see, the two citations that I picked up are already here. And I can here on the top um, decide on which kind of style I want. I have now ACS, but Angevante Kimi would also be fine. Let's say that's one way to do it. The other way is to insert directly from EndNote. So I go to EndNote, I pick um, the, the papers I like. Uh, let me pick now this two. I don't know why I think they, are, they don't appear there anymore. And if I go on this, the paper will be incited here. Yeah, so there are two ways, whatever you prefer. Either you search through insert citation or you go to the EndNote and uh, select the papers there. And there's much more you can do. So uh, you can go here, you can edit citation, you can update fields. It's really a very, very powerful program. So if you're interested in it, I very much recommend the courses from the ETH library that are more comprehensible in that sense. With that, I'm finished. I'm gonna go quickly back to my presentation. And um, there's a, a coffee card that you can download. And I'm also gonna put a link uh, for the download 
uh, in the chat later. And um, with that, I'm done. So I would like to thank you for your attention um, and uh, make a little bit of a marketing for our next coffee lecture next week. It's a new coffee lecture on a special tool for people who work with NMR Spectra. It's a guest coffee lecture um, from somebody who developed that tool. So if you are in the field of spectroscopy, I very much um, recommend uh, visiting us on Monday. Thank you.